Hey everyone, my name is Brittany and if you are new to my channel, I am a former photographer who now provides in-depth reviews and comparisons of photography gear and software, hopefully helping other photographers find the best tools to enhance their workflow. Over the last couple of months, I've been getting pretty well acquainted with the Aftershoot Edits 2.0 system and their various guidelines. And it was through those guidelines that I found that Aftershoot recommends that the best editing results come from a profile trained with 5,000 plus images. They also suggest that a profile trained on 2,500 images is a good alternative if you're short on files. After reading that and continuing to review and talk about the system, I kept thinking, what's the real difference between a 5,000 plus image profile and a 2,500 image profile? Given that the ProTier's 30-day free trial only allows for one AI profile at a time, it's not practical for most people to create, delete, and recreate profiles just to test this out. That's where I come in. I've got the time and enthusiasm to put these profiles to the test. My goal with this video is to offer you a clear comparison between the two profile sizes, so you don't have to spend your time experimenting. Whether you're curious about accuracy, time investment, or overall effectiveness, I'm here to provide the guidance you need to make an informed choice. Plus, I'm just downright intrigued to see the differences myself. To test the different sized profiles, I've used 2,611 images for the smaller profile and 6,156 images for the larger profile. Some of what we'll be covering today with those profiles are comparing the training time for the small and large profiles, a quick side quest of timing how long each profile takes to edit 100 plus images. I don't expect a huge difference here, but I love an excuse to use a stopwatch. And a side-by-side -side edit comparison. We'll be timing any tweaks I make along the way because let's face it, no AI is perfect and it'll help me answer the big question, will the 2611 profile need significantly more adjustments than the 6156 profile? By examining these aspects, we'll uncover the effort involved in building each profile and most importantly, determine if a larger profile is that much different than a smaller one. Also, if you like skipping ahead to spoilers, I do have the times for each category and my conclusion in the description below. I know everyone will have their own thoughts and feelings on what I should be exploring, and that is totally fine. I respect your ability to research in the way you'd like, and I hope you can respect the way I choose to explore. If you wanna do your own experiment within this system, I fully support you on that journey. Aftershoot has a 30-day free trial and they don't require a credit card to sign up, so play away. All right, let's get to it with the first element we're going to be looking at, the time to train these two profiles. Since I typically deep storage my edited images onto my server, the first thing I had to do was get the images and Lightroom catalogs that I wanted to build my profiles with back onto my computer's hard drive. This isn't a process that some will have to do, but I did want to note it because it's another bit of time I had to consider. And if you have a similar storage method, you'd have to consider it as well. I created new catalogs directly from Lightroom, which put the images onto my computer. One of the catalogs took over three hours to complete, and I needed two catalogs for my 2611 profile and five catalogs for my 6156 profile. So it takes a good chunk of time, but having these images local should improve the overall aftershoot uploading experience. With my images on my computer, I loaded them up into the Aftershoot system. There are two phases to the Aftershoot system. The first is the upload phase, which you can see the progress for happening right in the application. The second is the actual training, which is when we enter into a land of the unknown and just have to wait for our training is complete email. Because I wanted to make sure I got plenty of information, I created these profiles three different times and timed each training. Also, even though I uploaded 6,156 images to the system and got no errors, Aftershoot says my large profile was trained on 6,068 images. 
However, I've grown attached to the 6156 number, so I will be referring to my large profile by that number rather than whatever image count after shoot is forcing onto my profiles. Anyway, the time results are as follows. My first 2611 profile took 1 hour, 41 minutes, and 58 seconds to train. My second 2611 profile took 4 hours, 39 minutes, and 43 seconds. And my third 2611 profile took 4 hours, 50 minutes, and 26 seconds to complete. For an average time of 3 hours, 44 minutes, and 2 seconds. Moving to the bigger profile, for my 6156 profile, it took 8 hours, 53 minutes, and 10 seconds to train. My second 6156 profile took 7 hours, 28 minutes, and 55 seconds, and my third 6156 profile took 7 hours, 49 minutes, and 41 seconds to finish, with an average time of 8 hours, 3 minutes, and 55 seconds. I found these results to be really interesting, especially the time between that first 2611 profile and the second and third. I was trying to think of what I did differently for the first profile training, and then it hit me. I trained that first profile in the early days of the Edits 2.0 release, so there may not have been many people updating and training profiles just yet. Unfortunately, I can't roll back the clock to when Edits 2.0 was released in order to test that theory, but I do believe that the system is being used more and that the more accurate time to train a 2500 image profile is going to be about four hours. My intention for including that early days timing is to show that the training times for the AI might fluctuate depending on usage. I'd be interested to see if Aftershoot might have a future update to their AI model that accounts for an influx of users, or if once the initial surge of users updating their system levels out, the AI model will balance, and we'll see quicker training times. I might revisit this in a year or so to test that theory out. Other than that, the timings are exactly as I thought they would be between the smaller and larger profiles. The smaller profile took about half as much time to fully train, so if you are in the throes of a busy season, desperately in need of an editing reprieve, the smaller profile training time might be what you are willing to dedicate in order to give your eyeballs a break. Alternatively, if you're still in the prepping stage for the busy season, you might have some more time, like a full day to train a larger profile. It's really all about where you're at in the stress pyramid. Moving on to our edit processing side quest, I don't expect the processing times to vary much between the two profiles, because the speed for this section is more about the number of images we're loading up for the AI to edit, not the size of the profiles themselves. Since we're using the same set of images for this test, the difference in profile size shouldn't impact how quickly the edits are done. However, I do think this is a good opportunity to really put the Aftershoot AI editing system to the test and see how consistent and quick it is with its processing. Which is why this is a side quest and not a part of our main adventure. I ran the images through six times three times using my 2611 profile, and three times using my 6156 profile. On my first run through with my 2611 profile, the images took four minutes and 15 seconds to complete. On the second run through, the images took four minutes and eight seconds. And on the third run through, the images took one minute and 58 seconds. When I started using my 6156 profile to process edits, the first run through took two minutes and one second, the second took one minute and 53 seconds, and the third took one minute and 55 seconds. I was curious if there was maybe some sort of caching happening, so I found where my cache is stored for Aftershoot and deleted the project I knew was for this editing test. And then I reran the images through again and still got a sub two minute time, leading me to believe that this system is just really quick. Overall, the system is pretty consistent with an average runtime for edits coming in at two minutes and 41 seconds. I am curious how the times differ depending on where our images are stored, but that is another video for a different time. With one set of images edited using the 2611 profile and another with our 6156 profile, it's time to take a closer look at how these two profiles compare and what probably matters the most, the quality of the edits. Now, 
Let me set the stage for what I'm looking for in my edits, since you might not be familiar with my style. My editing style is a blend of what I consider moody joy, neutral to dark exposure, subtle contrast, with a warm temperature. There's a delicate balance between the colors not being eye-poppingly bright and also not overly desaturated. Where I'm from, the summer grasses can get kind of gnarly, so I like to keep greens and yellows in check the most. So while we go through these edits, that's what I'm hoping my AI profiles get close to. Also, as I go through this comparison, I will for certain images be timing myself, making adjustments. I'm not just looking at the results the AI profiles gave in initial application, because those images will still need tweaks. So does one profile need more adjustments than the other? If so, how much time does that add up to? That's an important factor for my workflow, and it's something I want you to keep in mind as we go through the image comparisons. For this section, I have marked my 2611 edits with one star and my 6156 edits with two stars. From the load in, both profiles look like they did a pretty solid job. The first set of images show very little difference between the two profiles. For the first five images, both profiles are close to what I'd deliver. The first big difference begins with this photo of the bride and her mom. My 6156 profile nailed the exposure while 2611 struggled. The time to get these images to a state I'd be happy to deliver was 24 seconds for the 2611 image and only 8 seconds for the 6156 profile. Even though it's only some seconds for making corrections, they can and do add up. Does the 6156 profile always hit in the way I'd like? No. Take this image of the groom's details. The 6156 profile brightened things up a bit too much. The 2611 profile was closer to where I'd want it straight out the gate, but still requires some adjustments as well. The thing I find really interesting is that when I started to make tweaks, the 6156 image ended up being quicker to edit. It only took 19 seconds versus 24 seconds for the 2611 image. This is because fewer sliders on the 6156 image needed tweaking since they were already at a better starting spot than the ones I had to touch on the 2611 image. So while 2611 seemed better at first glance, 6156 was faster to finalize and it honestly probably took less time than 19 seconds, but I was in double check mode with the sliders. When it comes to the ceremony, there were some images where 2611 excelled in hitting my style and some where 6156 was more true to how I'd edit. I had some temperature issues with both profiles at different points, like this image of the bride and groom saying their vows. The sun must have gone behind a cloud, making my raw image extra blue because the AI gave me no warmth in its edits. For these ceremony shots though, I did find myself appreciating the 2611 profile edits a teensy tiny bit more than 6156. It really just comes down to the contrast feeling a touch too heavy on the 6156 images for my personal preference. For portraits, group shots, and the reception, both profiles performed well. I had to make small tweaks here and there, like adjusting 2611 for being too dark in some spots or fixing 6156 for being too blue. Overall, both profiles had their good and mid moments with no clear winner. Coming into golden hour portraits though is where we encounter a consistent struggle with both profiles. They had the same shortcomings. The exposure on the edits was either too bright or dark. My light went out. Sad little light. There was excessive haze from lens flares that the AI did not correct with contrast or dehazing, and the temperature of the edits were all around too cool. To dig in a little bit more to the time it took to make some adjustments, for this shot of the groom lifting the bride, both profiles took 30 seconds to edit, with different factors evening out the times. For the groom spinning the bride, the adjustments were more time consuming. 2611 took 1 minute and 17 seconds, and 6156 took 1 minute and 40 seconds. I was surprised they weren't closer given how much effort went into adjusting both. For simpler golden hour portraits, like this one of the bride and groom leaning on each other, both profiles required quick adjustments, just 21 seconds each. The reason for the similar time is because the adjustments needed were the same. 
just in opposite directions. 2611 was a bit on the darker side, while the 6156 was too bright. But those fixes were really straightforward. While Golden Hour was a bit lackluster in the AI edits with both profiles, the remaining bits of the wedding were handled supremely well. When it comes to the dance floor opening up at an event, I tend to overshoot and overpick all the time. I just cannot pass up an image of someone really getting down and showing off their moves and just having a blast. So I select and edit way too many photos during this portion. Having an AI editing profile handling that pack of images and getting me to a place where I only need to quickly glance at them is an unbelievable time saver. And I found that these two profiles handled the dance floor really well. The last images of the night are from the exit. And this is where both profiles required some adjustments, but in different ways. The 2611 profile nailed one image but missed the mark on another, while the 6156 profile did the opposite. It performed well on the image that the 2611 profile struggled with, but fell short where 2611 excelled. In the end, they kind of balanced each other out in terms of the adjustments needed. To wrap this all up, I know most people aren't going to be building profiles the way I did in this video. You're going to either go big and aim for maximum accuracy by training a large profile, or you'll meet the minimum requirements to get the profile done faster, so you can jump right into editing. The key takeaway, regardless of the profile size you choose, is that the adjustments will always need to be made. In my experience, the differences between how my 2611 and 6156 profiles handled edits weren't that drastic to me. The bigger profile could be looked at as better because when making adjustments in Lightroom, it is faster, but the smaller profile did hold its own and was able to capture the essence of my style. Speaking from my initial experience with this application, I chose to train with 2,500 images for my very first profile. The shorter training time meant I could get my profile back in about half a workday and start editing on the same day. I knew that if I wanted to fine tune my 2,500 image profile, I could upload my newly adjusted catalogs back into Aftershoot and let it train more. For me, the ability to get to work quickly was more valuable than spending extra time up front for a potential bump in accuracy. Ultimately, the best approach depends on your priorities, speed or precision. Whether you're leaning towards the bigger profile for the extra precision or just want to save time with the smaller one, my goal here was to give you the chance to see both routes in action. Sort of like a not so thrilling choose your own adventure where all the paths are spoiled. Through this experiment, you get to see what each approach offers without having to invest the time yourself. If you're interested in diving into creating your own AI profile, Aftershoot does have a 30 day free trial of their pro tier where you can create one AI profile to play with. I have a link in the description of the video if you want to feel it out for yourself. Thank you so much for tuning in. If there's ever any photo related applications or products you'd like me to test out, destroy, or give you any guidance on, please let me know in the comments down below. Also, I'd absolutely love it if you'd give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and turn, and turn that little bell on so you can be alerted whenever I release a new video. Thanks again, and I'll see you in the next one.